So I have the luxury of working at home, and I have the luxury for working for CBT Nuggets full time. And I have the luxury of making these incredible nuggets. And it's really important that the nuggets that I create are backed up and then archived. In this video, which is a nice slice of our Storage Plus course here at CBTNuggets.com, I'm going to go ahead and just share with you my thoughts of a simple backup and archiving strategy that I use for my CBT Nuggets. You might be able to learn from this and use it as well. So one of the simple philosophies that I use as I'm creating and storing my nuggets is I always want to make sure they're in multiple places until they're so old, they're so stale, that I'll go ahead and archive them to a single place. And here's how I do it. So here is my home desktop machine that I utilize to make nuggets. Here's a beautiful Wacom tablet that goes with it. They're connected by a cable. Here I am making nuggets at home. And I am utilizing two copies of all of the nugget files to create the nugget at this point. There is the locally stored copy, but then there is the copy that I am indeed simultaneously parking in none other than Dropbox. Obviously, in today's environment, there are many different cloud-based storage options to choose from. They're all trying to lure you with initial large amounts of free storage. So go ahead and really shop that experience. For me, I've been with Dropbox now for multiple years. They just work for me. So notice, as I am working with my CBT Nugget files, as I'm creating the nuggets and the micro nuggets for you to enjoy, they are indeed in two places. I just have to make sure, of course, that I have internet connectivity to the cloud and my initial work with them is indeed in the two places that I love, the safety of that. Now, I have completed the nugget or the micro nugget. Now, I, out of real paranoia, put it in another location. So what I have on my local network, I'll go ahead and connect this stuff to my local network here. I have a network attached storage device, a NAS device. When I'm done with the nugget, Inside of Camtasia, I have the ability to export everything to a zip. And I go ahead and I export using the zip format to my local network attached storage. Now a NAS sounds really fancy and maybe it's something that you thought wasn't achievable for the home environment, but let's just bop up to amazon.com real quick and see just how achievable network attached storage in the home is nowadays. So I must tell you, I was in absolute shock when I pulled this up today, researching this micro nugget for you. You see, I'm using a Western Digital Net Center. It's a 500 and gigabyte. It's a 500 gigabyte external, you know, NAS storage device on my home network, and I probably paid for it back in the day, like four to five hundred dollars. Remember, it's 500 gigabytes. Well, look at this option. Here we have a four terabyte personal network attached storage device for your infrastructure and it is measurably less than what I paid for one that was a fraction of its size. So these prices are just going to continue to get competitive and more competitive. In fact, if four terabytes was overkill for you, and for me it actually would be, I'd be fine with the two terabytes. We can see that's 149. Now you kind of realize, well, wait a minute, I'm not paying all that much more for double that capacity. So you're just going to weigh this out against your budget. And obviously, I'm not suggesting that Western Digital is the only vendor that you could go with here. So go ahead and shop these vendors against each other as well if you're deciding to incorporate network attached storage into your backup and archiving solution like I did. So let's pick up the story. So I at this point in our discussion, have a copy in Dropbox, we'll call this one. I have a copy locally, we'll call it two. I now, when the nugget is done or the micro nugget is done, I have a third copy on my local NAS. This is hugely important because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start to run out of space locally. I'm gonna start to run out of space in Dropbox. And in fact, it's on titles, it's on courses, it's on nuggets and micro nuggets that are kind of ready to be retired. 
I don't need to edit a course typically after it's been on the shelf for a long time. So it's there's really no need for me to have the local and the Dropbox copy anymore. But I still want to be very, very careful about my particular, you know, having my information available in multiple spots. So it's at this point that I go to my NAS and I go ahead and I burn to optical media. This is now my archived copy of the information. Now I have it in two places once again. It's on my NAS. There's an archived copy. Now I'll go ahead and eliminate my local and therefore my Dropbox copy. You know what's going to happen. After a larger amount of time goes by, I'll go ahead and eliminate my NAS copy and I feel safe just possessing the archived copy. And again, I'll use the appropriate optical media here like dual layer DVDs and things of that nature to get plenty of these archived nuggets stored and that's the only place they will exist years down the road as I go through this process. So. I hope this has given you some ideas of very affordable and effective ways in which you can use cloud-based storage, local-based storage, NAS-based storage, and then optical media for archiving so that as your content is fresh, it is always in multiple places. And then eventually you'll feel fine with it just sitting on a shelf in like an optical disk format. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.